Oh, that looks better. Now you've just them over. Yes. Just a bit of flavour, you can just throw the skins in. That's what two dishes today for you. We've got our torch mackerel with um, tomato, lime, avocado, and coriander salsa. Dead nice, light, fresh, tasty summer dish, lunch dish, whatever. And we've got a wee sum on the beef with butternut squash puree, parmesan potatoes, savoy cabbage, and a red wine juice. And okay, so thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Alison. It should be what I call claggy. Nice and claggy. So, it's like that. So at this stage, it's an onion badgie. Doesn't need any weeding. And you'll see, I didn't use all the water. I went, not this time. And then it's, uh, leave it standing for about three quarters of an hour. After that, we cut it. So we cut Put it with uh, knives, that allows the whey to come out, so that allows the liquid to separate and we're left with this curd here. Yeah, that's it. So all I do is just keep folding a few times, not too many. Take it around, push it through, really tune up, thumb and index finger. Let's set it back down to get it back. So yeah. And then it's cold water. Good afternoon everybody. Uh, thanks for coming to support Greg and Molly today. Uh, Currently, Greg and Molly are doing an NC Level 5 at Ayrshire College based in Kilmarnock over two years and they've been uh, in their second year now to do their NC Level 5 course. So they've joined me today to show you how you do mushroom risotto, so it'll be a slight of competition between both of them and how, how they cook it. Okay. And Molly and Greg's just going to put a few shavings into the parmesan just to enrich it. So again, there's no added salt yet. We'll season it near the end, right at the end. Okay, there's some parmesan. Good punch. I haven't told them they're not too well here. Yeah. Okay. So a nice pile in the centre. So you want to build up height for the plate. There you have is uh, Molly's well mushroom risotto and parmesan and Greg well mushroom risotto parmesan. Thank you very much. Okay. It's a very favourite lace of mine, you see, and how nice that would be to drape that round the side of a cake to give it a, a nice piece of decoration. And I have a printer in the shop and I can print on sugar paper, so I can print images and things like that, so that's quite useful again. So you sugar crafters, if you're ever looking for a label for a bottle or something to made, I'm quite happy to print these out. It's only a couple of pounds we charge for a sheet. So that's another of the kind of things that we, we can do. What other uses do we have for it, Linda? You can learn to do pulled sugar, which is quite interesting as well. But it's just, there's such interesting mediums now to use to do interesting cake decorating, te decorating techniques. So there we are. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to talk you through one of the dishes that we do in schools. Uh, it's a salmon fish cake, but today we're going to do a salmon goujon. And then you put a few of the salty potatoes around the outside. And then just finish off with a little bit of your tartar sauce. And there you have it guys, fish goujons, mixed salad, coleslaw and tartar sauce, homemade tartar sauce. Thank you very much. So I'm Lindsay, I'm from Ayrshire Hampers. Um, what I'm going to go over today is a bit about the history of Ayrshire food. The provenance in Ayrshire food goes back years and years and years. You all know about the potatoes, Ayrshire new potatoes from down the coast. We've got the provenance of Ayrshire milk and the Dunlop cheese and the provenance of the seafood in from the Clyde. So I'm going to cover those three. An Ayrshire salad. It's not fried. There's nothing deep fat about it. Okay? The plan about this is that it's like a salad nichoise. 
but it's more a kind of salad a la Ayrshire. Now for it to be an Ayrshire potato, it has to be grown in the sandy soil down on the Ayrshire coast, Girvan Way. You also get a lovely uh, Ayrshire potato from Port and Cross if you've ever been that way up the, near Largs. Yeah, Ayrshire potatoes have a creamy consistency. So, we potato. The luck cheese comes from the Ayrshire milk. Now Ayrshire milk was developed in the 1700s by John Dunlop of Dunlop House and he started developing the Ayrshire breed. Now the Ayrshire breed started known as the Dunlop cow and then the Cunningham cow and became the Ayrshire cow. So I'm going to put in a bit of cheese because we like our fat in Ayrshire, don't we? Eggs. Anyone heard of Corrie Main's eggs? Corrie Main's eggs, they deliver to all the schools as well. Fantastic free range eggs from Ayrshire. Everything's Ayrshire so far. So I'm going to put some eggs into the salad. Full of protein, really good for you. Give a bit of flavour. So what I'm going to use today for my salmon a la Ayrshire this is Peroni's hot smoked salmon. Peroni, Jonathan Peroni, another person who went to Iceland with me. Jonathan Peroni's in air. It's amazing. When he starts talking about fish markets and fishing from around the UK, it's fascinating. And they've started their own smoking process. So they do their own smoked salmon. They do their own hot smoked salmon. And Claire was telling me earlier that they use a sherry and spices cure and then it's cured for a day in the kiln and smoked. It's to die for it. They're through there. If I've convinced you, you need some hot smoked salmon for your tea tonight in your salad a la Ayrshire. Salt. Who knows that salt was a huge industry for Scotland? Salt coat gets its name from the salt pans along the coast. So there we go. Bit of lemon zest on top. If you want anything on the side, We've got a wee hot beetroot chutney from Aaron. It'd be wrong if I didn't mention Aaron when I'm up here. Or a wee chilli jam from Lynn at Everything Chilli, who's in that tent over there, just as a wee aside. Very healthy. Healthy from Ayrshire. Absolutely. Why not? Why is that? Thank you for coming.